Good morning, Christ Church. It is so good to see all of you here this morning. My name is Pastor Beth Rambicure. If you are visiting for the very first time, we welcome you and we're so excited you're here. After worship, please take a moment to introduce yourself as you go back out the door so that when you come back next week, I can remember you. And wait, wait, was there a comment? Somebody's laughing. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know that sometimes I forget names. Okay, this might be one of those days where I call all of you Judy. So today, I would like to remind you to please fill out one of our cards. We are using those to help us with attendance. And Candy was so excited that I remembered to say something about that last week. So we would love for you to do that. But also, you can use those for prayer requests. During our service today, we will be having a time of lifting up our prayers and concerns. If you have a prayer request you would like lifted up in church this morning, just put it on the card and bring it up to the basket. If you would like it to remain private, you can simply put it in the basket as the usher through, and we will make sure that it gets prayed over during the week. Also, there's other information on here. So if there's something you need to update us on, please let me know. Okay, there were other announcements that I had to make today, but I can't remember what any of them are. <laughs> if, if any of you sitting out there are thinking of the announcements you wanted me to make, go ahead and pop up. No takers. <laughs> Great, you all forgot too. Hallelujah. <laughs> and also, we welcome all of you who are joining with us on Zoom. We know that you are here with us more than in spirit because you're actually watching us live. Y'all, will you take a moment to say good morning to our Zoom folks? Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. All right, well, not knowing what else to say, <laughs> and wanting to get to the part of the service that I do know, let us worship together.
Good morning, church. Would you please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my heart. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to hold that beauty ever before me. Our scripture from the, for this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, <clears throat> land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, life has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went from there, as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets and he called them immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him jesus went throughout galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people 
the word of God for the people of God.
Imagine being the person who has to follow that. Thank goodness God's got it. <laughs> Choir, thank you. Ah, Will you pray with me? Eternal one who moves through our lives, who calls us to the banks of many different shores, you are the quiet voice that whispers and stirs the waters. You are the one who gives us comfort and courage. You are the one who troubles and the one who leads forward. And so let us hear you this morning and give us the courage to say yes. Amen. Amen. Over the last two months, we have heard a series of interactions between Jesus and John the Baptist. And while today does not exactly sound like one of those interactions in the Gospel of John, in the Gospel of Matthew, we actually do finally draw a circle around what it is that's been happening between Jesus and John today. We move intentionally from John's calling and ministry and personal struggle with faith, his perspective, through each one of the lectionary readings towards this moment. This moment when Jesus stands in the fullness of his own ministry and the meaning of who he is to us as the Messiah is revealed. In today's text, we finally arrive on those shores of Galilee where Jesus will begin his ministry. Matthew 4, 12 through 17 delivers us into those teachings. 18 through 22 unfolds what Matthew understands our calling as disciples to be. And 423 declares to all what this good news about Jesus Christ is all about. We finally have come to those shores where God will give us all that we need to do the ministries of our lives, to be the church and the people we've been called to be. And they are a different kind of shore. Now, when I was a little kid, I was fascinated with the idea of exploration. People who know me well will tell you that what I really wanted to be when I grew up was an astronaut, because I thought being an astronaut would just be the best thing ever. You get to fly in the sky. Well, you get to fly in general, which is pretty awesome. And then you get to leave the Earth, and you get to see the stars. So cool. And anybody who knows me well will tell you that I can't do math. So being an astronaut was really not in the work for me. But the idea of exploration still captivated me, whether it's astronauts setting foot on the moon or, say, the great Arctic and Antarctic explorers. I still, someday, I'm like, I am going to cross the continent of Antarctica by myself. Probably not. And then, of course, there are the maritime voyages that brought people to new lands or the great nomadic migrations of people as folks found different places on the habitable continents of our world. Pretty much any story that had to do with people pushing past the boundary of everything they knew and had known. People wanting to dive into the unknown and discover something new those stories would take hold of my heart and soul. I think that this is one of the reasons I became a pastor, because while there are still frontiers to our physical world left to explore, take the great oceans, we still only know this much about them, right? There is no greater frontier than that of our own spirits and souls and what it means to explore the seas of discovery that happen with the practice of faith, particularly our faith experienced in, with, and through community. 
I am constantly finding myself landing on different shores, exploring things I have never encountered before. It is quite a gift of exploration. And having had and heard God's word to us today asking, will you go? I wonder what are some of the things you have always wanted to explore are. And so what I'd like you to do is take a moment and turn to the person sitting next to you. And if there's no one conveniently at hand, feel free to move. Great chance to stand up and stretch. Take a moment, and if you're watching online, you can reflect to yourself or with someone you're watching with. What is something you want to explore? What is that call of exploration in your own life? Take a minute to share that with who you're sitting with. Take a moment to find a good pausing place in your conversation with one another. So I'm curious, and you're going to have to shout really loud because, I, <laughs> because my hearing isn't what it used to be. Um, what are some of the places that you are called to explore? Shout out. Let me know. Australia. 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 What'd you say, Brad? Yes, absolutely. Yes, Angela. I just found out I got my OBCP's professional certificate. I'm going to explore new job opportunities. New job. I'm so happy. Yes, awesome, Angela. Exploring new job opportunities, finding out who we are in the work that we do. Yes, what else? <laughs> Australia and <laughs> I love it. What else? Take a train to Cardale to Oh, I love it. Take a train. And did you say to Williams? Okay, amazing. That will be beautiful. What else? What else do you want to explore? Square dancing! Heck yeah! What else? I thought I saw a hand over here. What do you want to explore? 
Oh, I know what you want to explain. <laughs> yes. Petroglyphs, amazing, yes. Yeah, we talked up here about exploring heaven, which I was like, no, all of you have to stay here. No exploring heaven yet. And then I was like, oh, pastor, careful there, right? <laughs> And we talked about mountains and we talked about oceans. We talked about those places that we're longing to see that we still want to go to. We talked about the dreams we used to have, the places we dreamed of exploring but didn't have a chance because our lives moved in a different direction. What is incredible about the text before us today is that Jesus is entering a new frontier of his own life as he begins his ministry. And he stands on those shores of the unknown and he calls to us, follow me. That is the calling of Christian life. Follow me. Now, I have never caught the opening words that start off this story. Matthew 4.12 opens with these words. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. What does it mean that the first thing he does as he is preparing to enter his own ministry is withdraw? He has such a close relationship now with John. Why is it that he is moving to this other place? And yet this opening displays what kind of Messiah Jesus is to be. He is not one who is going to take over John's ministry. He is not going to take over John's calling and talk to his disciples the way that John has been doing. He certainly is not going to lead a protest of arrest or a rebellion. He is not going to bring fire and judgment down from heaven on King Herod, which we know people were hoping Jesus would do. And yet, even in this action of withdrawing, Jesus takes up the mantle of what it is John has been saying. For what are those words that his ministry opens with? Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And yet, here we are being called to these shores, not the shores of John's warning, which we heard along the banks of the Jordan. No, when Jesus calls us to repent, he, yes, he's using that Hebrew root that tells us to turn or return to God. But in the Greek of Matthew's gospel, this word repent means to change one's mind. And it's not just changing one's mind. The deeper meaning of that is to change the direction of our lives. Jesus is saying, get yourself a new orientation to the way you live and act on it. Place God at the very center of what you're doing and move. Before Jesus even calls his first disciples, before Matthew explains what the good news of Jesus means in this ministry he is about to do, before Jesus climbs the mountain and shares with us what it means to be a disciple, the first thing we hear is that the pattern of being called by God is a constant reorientation of our lives towards God. That is the pattern of discipleship in Matthew. That is what it means to be the church. We are a community of liberation. We are the ones that are able to hear God through the noise of our lives saying, I need you to serve. I need you to answer. I need you simply to be present to the world. And our response is, here I am. And through that, through the waters of our baptism that bring about new birth, through the waters of salvation which we have experienced on the banks of the Jordan, to the life-giving waters of the Sea of Galilee, where we will be shaped and formed as disciples, we experience the liberation of God 
as God says, allow me to be the one who shapes you, who gives you the courage to say yes to the new challenges, the faithfulness of answering our call of being those who love with action as God first loves us. Another commentary that I read says that it is incredible because Matthew 4, 18 through 22, as Jesus is calling first Andrew, and then Simon Peter, and then James and John, we are actually experiencing the first miracle of Matthew's gospel. Why is it a miracle? Because Jesus says, follow me, and they just up and go. They do it immediately. No questions are asked. No other conflict happens. It is an incredible immediate change in their lives, which demonstrates the power of Jesus' word to create within us that repentance, that reorientation to God within our lives as God works within us and makes us capable of responding yes to Jesus' invitation and call to follow me. Every time I stand on these shores with Andrew and Simon and James and John and hear Jesus call to me, follow me and I will make you fishers of people, I must admit that I hesitate. Do any of you hesitate? <laughs> I have no doubt that God will be able to use me in incredible ways, but man, I have so many questions, hundreds of them. And I have to tell you, God, I also have other priorities. I have obligations. I have other pressures and needs. I have a thousand really good excuses for saying, not today, Jesus. Can you imagine what this story would be like if what Simon Peter had said to Jesus was, ah, not today. And yet how many times is that our answer to the urgent pressing of our call? And I'm not talking about our call to ministry, my friends. I'm talking about the calling to Christian vocation. And by that, I mean being a Christian with our lives in all that we do, allowing that partnership with God to cultivate the kingdom of God around us and to transform the world through work. This is a miracle story because all the reasons we have for saying, not today, Jesus, vanish as God makes us capable of saying, yes and going. Matthew's gospel grounds us in the fact that discipleship isn't being called to admire Jesus. It's not a calling to consider Jesus' teachings. It's not about accepting his principles. What it is about is listening to the call and responding immediately, allowing God to say yes to all the other things in our lives that are making it difficult for us to respond to Jesus. And what comes of our willingness to follow God's invitation here? It is not an accident that our gospel ending read ends with 23. Jesus went through all Galilee. And what does he do as he's going through this region? He is teaching. He is proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Friends, what happens when we simply follow is Jesus responds to the needs of the world through us, uses us to bring about a new wholeness in all that is broken and hurting. That is the result of our discipleship. We participate in the healing and transformation of this world. This is a call of exploration. It is a call to enter into the unknown, to go to those different shores we haven't yet seen. The call of discovery is so very simple. Follow me. But those shores we find ourselves upon, 
are the complex realities of life and there is nothing simple about those shores. And yet, my friends, our yes is the miracle of faith. We are called and God works within us so that we can respond immediately. So will you say with me, God, here I am? Amen. Church, will you please rise as we sing our hymn of response on the lake shore?
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. The ushers will now be coming forth to move among us to collect our gifts and offerings. Let us offer up to God what we have. the gifts of your people, 
that we offer up to you so that you might use them to extend the message of good news and bring about the kingdom in all people and places at all times. Use us, for we are here. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we pray together. As we lift up our prayers together today, I am also going to ask us um, during our time of the prayers of the people, if there is a prayer request that is on your heart during the silent pause, please feel free to lift that up. If there is a praise upon your heart that you wish to share, lift that up as well. And we will say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray together. Almighty and gracious God, you are ever with us, calling us to the various shores of our life with you. We ask today that all of those things, the turbulence in our lives that makes it hard to hear your voice, that you give it stillness, that you give us calm, that you give us the open spaciousness that is needed to hear and respond to you. God, in all things, you bring about a new type of wholeness. And so we lift up to you both those places of brokenness which need your healing, those people who we are praying for, and also those things of joy and celebration in our lives. Hear our prayers. For Joe Delapaz. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, you are merciful. Hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers for Francis Parker. She has COVID. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Dorothy Taylor, who recently lost her husband. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Janet Tolman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You are ever with us, giving us comfort, opening possibilities. We lift up to you also, God, those who are caught in limbo. We lift up to you, O oh God, new jobs and trying new things. We lift up to you celebration of getting paychecks. We lift up to you the needs for repair and security. We lift up to you, O oh God, our hope for places to live and help with finances. We lift up to you, O oh God, prayers for those with pets who are struggling. We lift up to you, O oh God, those people in our lives who are struggling and in need of your healing. We lift up to you, O oh God, those things that we enjoy. And, O oh God, we lift up to you, especially our own selves, and ask that you continue to move within us, among us, through us, and beyond us, calling us ever to participate in the work that you are doing in all the ways we can. 
And we go before you also as a people of confession, seeking your pardon and forgiveness, knowing that it is you working within us that makes all possible. And so as a people in search of this wholeness, let us pray this prayer of confession together. You come with the words, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Drawing us to you with the invitation, fish with me. But so often your words are found out by the din of life, the tumult of demands pressing upon us. Forgive us for the ways we ignore you when we choose to go a different way. Give us the courage to respond to your call in our lives. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come. Light is breaking into the darkness. God has conquered sin and death, forgiving us for love and grace. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you now please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As a people who are celebrating the ways that God moves through us, let us rise and sing our closing hymn, Jesus Calls Us. <laughs> another and share this benediction. May we go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. Amen. You may be seated for the postlude.